Hey dudes, and welcome back to The Bants. As always, I am your host, The Bants. And here we are once again in the middle of the weekend. I hope you all are enjoying your Saturday. And hopefully, as always, to go along with it, it is time for our second and final what's happening in fashion for the week. So let's just get right into it. And just a quick heads up before we get started, some of you may have already noticed that this video is a little bit shorter than usual. Don't worry, however, these videos aren't going anywhere. We're just changing up the style a little bit. And if you do want to know a little bit more, I will be talking about it at the end of the video. And of course, I also will timestamp it in the description down below but now with all that out of the way let's move on into our headline for the day and in our headline of the day i just recently looked over chris van ash's debut collection from berluti and after seeing it it actually brought a couple of things to light in my mind, so let's talk about them. And first up, for those of you who didn't even realize that Chris Van Ash was at Berluti now, let's take a quick recap over the designer apocalypse that happened over the last year. So over the last year, there has been a ton of shakeup as far as designers working for different brands and companies. The biggest clusterfuck of all, however, came from all the different changes that happened happened underneath the LVMH umbrella. What we saw here was Hater Ackerman leave Berluti to work solely on his eponymous label, which made room for Chris Van Ash, who then left Dior to work at Berluti, who then made room for Kim Jones, who left Louis Vuitton to work for Dior, leaving an open space at Louis Vuitton for Virgil Abloh. So now I hope all of you understand what I meant by calling this a clusterfuck. And although we have now seen runway shows or just collections from all of the other designers that I just mentioned, the one that we hadn't seen yet was the newest collection from Berluti by now designer Chris Van Ash. Well, his first capsule collection has now dropped and honestly, I'm very mixed on how I should feel about it. It's not that this is a bad collection by any stretch of the imagination, but as I was looking over it the first time, a lot of things were going through my mind. I really enjoyed a lot of these slimming silhouettes here, I loved a lot of use of different color pop techniques and all over prints, and I thought it was a pretty good collection all over for a new season of Dior. And that's when it hit me. This isn't actually a Dior collection. This is supposed to be a Berluti collection. And if there's one thing I can say for sure, it's that this is damn well not a Berluti collection. Really, the only thing missing from this being a Dior collection is the Dior patches on the suit sleeves and those very nice, clean color pops of red and blue. Oh wait. Those are actually still here. And after seeing this collection here, it really got me starting to think about other designers as well. I mean, aside from this instance here of KVA reusing his Dior designs, we just had Eddie Slamon show off his Celine collections, which really, really heavily reused a lot of his ideas from Yves Saint Laurent. And even in Kim Jones's last runway show, we saw a lot of similar silhouettes as well as tropical and floral fabrics that he has been using very recently at Louis Vuitton up until now, along of course with his shitty attempts at trying to do elevated streetwear. And although the defense could be made that I should be cutting these designers a little bit of slack because they are just very recently transitioning into their new roles at these companies, and even designers like Eddie for example who've been away from the industry for a while might need a little bit of time to de-rust, I really don't think that's fair. The reason being is because if we take a look at another designer who has really stepped away from the fashion industry for a couple years and just came back, in this case Ricardo Tizzi, after seeing his first capsule collection as well as his first showings at fashion shows recently, we can see that he didn't stick to that same idea that he had at Givenchy. Sure, we still see a lot of his creativity and streetwear aesthetics and all over patterns and such show through, 
but he did a nice job of mixing that up with some more heritage-esque styles that Burberry has always had, making something completely different and evolving the brand instead of just copy-pasting like the other three I just mentioned. At least that's what I was able to take away from seeing the Capsule and Burberry collections, but if you have a different opinion on that, please let me know. And I know that I've argued very much so in the case of the designer in the past, I mean just recently just a few weeks ago, I was talking about just how stupid I thought it was for so many people to be up in arms about what Eddie was trying to do with Celine, for example. Not just by taking the accent off the E, but by switching it up into much more his style, as opposed to what Phoebe Philo had been doing before. But I do realize that I might have been a little bit too black and white in my statements in that video, because everything's not really supposed to be that cut and dry. What I should have said instead was even though yes it is still completely up to the designer to take the brand into whatever creative direction they want, they should still adhere somewhat to some of the guidelines or the creativity or even design elements that the brand has at up until this point because that's why this brand is still around and that's why this brand still has the legacy it has. And hopefully that legacy that it will continue to have even after these designers are gone. And aside from Titsi doing that right now, I think we have seen both past and present other brands and designers doing this at a very high level. For example, as far as past brands go, let's once again bring up Eddie Slamon at Yves Saint Laurent. He did a very fantastic job of taking his own design elements and ideas and mixing them in with a lot more of the historical, decade-old kind of rock star aesthetic that Saint Laurent had been doing back in the 70s and 80s. And as for a current example, I think that Sebastian Meunier is doing a fantastic job at Anne de Moelle Meester, even if it took a couple of seasons for them to get all of the kinks out. Just try to think about it this way. Imagine if tomorrow Rick Owens just up and died out of nowhere. Please, for the love of God, do not let this happen. Then imagine if one of these more popular designers took over his position as creative director at Rick Owens. Could could you imagine Virgil coming in and just taking his designs and turning them into streetwear and then just adding quotation marks of goth or Rick or usually what I'm dressed in? Or just imagine Matthew Williams coming in and just throwing a chest rig or one of his stupid belts on every piece in these collections. Or imagine if Shane Oliver came in and just started adding bondage straps to everything. Wait. That actually might work, but I'm sure by now you get what I'm trying to say. My point is, is that all of these super high-end renowned designers have been brought into these companies mainly to bring in their creative influence because that's the point of a creative director, a designer, is to bring some type of creativity to a brand. And if you're going to be a creative that's brought into a brand, your whole point there should be to evolve the brand, not just rebrand what you already know. And I know that I might be getting up in arms a little too early since all of these guys have really just put out their first collections, but I will say I am very interested to see exactly where these brands go from here and whether they actually do evolve or if they just stay part of the course. Either way, I do think it'll be pretty interesting to see. But with all that now said, let me pass off some questions to you guys. Do you agree with me here? Do you disagree with me? Do you think that I am being a little bit too harsh? Did you notice a lot of the same things that I noticed among a lot of these collections? Or are you a little bit more on the optimistic side and actually just see this as them breaking the ice and that we'll get to see much more of what they're capable of in the next coming seasons? Or maybe you have something else entirely worth saying, but either way, I'd love to know what all you guys think about all of this. All right, and now with our headline done, let's move on into our video update, shall we? So for those of you who have been following the channel for a little while now, you might have noticed that my videos have slowly been getting longer and longer and longer. And I really am sorry about that. The main goal originally of these videos was to be about 
12 to 14 minutes long and now they're easily approaching 20 sometimes 20 plus minutes and yeah I think that is a little bit too long for my personal taste so for the next couple weeks I'm gonna be trying out something a little bit different and here's what I'm gonna do instead of doing one very long video I'm gonna be splitting this into two separate videos the headline video and the everything else video that of course being the art section the fashion section and the fashion articles section it also means that you're going to be getting four plus videos a week instead of two plus but at the same time it also means that they're going to be spread across four separate days these days probably being Tuesday Wednesday and Friday Saturday although I can't really confirm that yet but either way probably around the days that I normally upload those of course being on Tuesdays and Saturdays but over the next few weeks I'd really appreciate all of you guys feedback on this whether you prefer the new method with shorter but more videos a week or the old method of longer but less videos a week but with all that now said thank you all once again for watching these videos and supporting my content i hope you all have a great rest of your saturday and i'll see you guys all tomorrow